how did Felicity Fenner, curator and lecturer at COFA, become aware of your artwork and then include you in the group exhibition Once Marooved? Yes, I met uh, Felicity Fenner at my exhibition uh, opening um, at Gallery 4A in 2004. And um, uh, she wrote about an article for a magazine. Uh, and then uh, next week exhibition in uh, Fat Space in Sydney, I invited her uh, to my exhibition and uh, I asked uh, her to write about an article for me. And uh, in, that was in 2000, early 2005. And uh, when I had a show uh, in Art Space, my solo show uh, in Art Space, uh, I invited Felicity Fenner again to my exhibition opening. And uh, uh, he uh, actually she liked my artwork, Sweet Barrier Reef. And then uh, she proposed my Sweet Barrier Reef to her exhibition in Adelaide Biennale last year. And then now, so yeah, I was uh, lucky to pick it up by her. Yeah. How did Sweet Barrier Reef come about? Where did you get the ideas from? Uh, idea from my experience. Uh, I was living in Okinawa, Japan for three years. Uh, I was working as an assistant for pottery uh, master. Uh, and uh, Okinawa got a beautiful uh, coral reef. But uh, uh, sadly, uh, the over 90% of coral uh, bleached, died. And uh, I, I'm, I'm a free diver. Every morning I jump in the uh, coral uh, sea and uh, uh, the free dive, uh, down the free diving. And uh, I, I saw it's uh, disappointed. Uh, many corals bleached the dive because of uh, global warming and uh, Okinawa, the uh, biggest sugar industry in Japan. A lot of the sugar cane there, and uh, after the rain, the uh, river ran off to the coast and covered the coral reef and killed immediately. And I, uh, uh, when I came to Australia, uh, I knew the same thing happened in Great Barrier Reef as well. And, and then, so I, uh, the, uh, the new idea that came out, and uh, I uh, try to make something with the sugar, and uh, uh, and then the eventually I made uh, sweet bar leaf. Also, I'm uh, focus on uh, uh, consumerism, and I love sugar and I love sweet food actually, and uh, uh, but uh, uh, you know in in this. Uh, uh, Consumerism, you know, uh, modern uh, in modern society, uh, people consume sugar, you know, uh, other things, you know, petrol to drive, and uh, uh, sugar is a uh, uh, kind of metaphor of you know, consumerism and uh, uh, people's desire. I've noticed that from previous exhibitions you've shown Sweet Barrier Reef yeah. in, in different um, exhibition yeah. locations. Um, how does the artwork change to fit the location of the exhibition? So this, uh, the Great Barrier Reef is uh, uh, so the world heritage. Uh, everybody knows Great Barrier Reef. And uh, uh, this Venice Biennale is the uh, most famous uh, the Biennale in the world and very historical uh, Biennale. And uh, in uh, Italy, and so I'd like to uh, show this uh, 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 installation with message. It's uh, not only for Australian, not only for Japanese, it's uh, all, uh, the uh, uh, coral bleaching that happened over the globe. So uh, I also uh, the first is uh, the theme of this group exhibition. It suits my uh, work. 
Because of the deliberate choice to use mm -hmm. perishable materials yeah. in um, your artwork and the ephemeral nature mm -hmm. of the artwork, how important is the documentation and the photography or the filming yes. of your artwork? Yes, it's uh, very perishable and uh, uh, I, I'm going to have a performance. Uh, I, I'm going to make edible uh, sculpture and cut and serve to the attendants. So it's disappear in the opening. So uh, documentation is very important and document uh, with uh, still image and also uh, a video camera and then uh, edit it and uh, uh, show uh, uh, in, uh, in the later. So I would like to show the uh, documentation uh, what happened in the opening. Yeah, to people again. Does that documentation become part of your artwork? Yes, um, documentation is an uh, uh, important uh, part of my work and uh, very important. So my first work in Australia is called Fumie Tiles. It's, uh, I made uh, uh, over 2,000 of uh, tiles, uh, fragile tiles, ceramic tiles uh, featured uh, Australian endangered butterflies, and uh, I covered gallery floor and let people step on breaks in. And uh, I spent eight months, and uh, uh, the people uh, destroyed in half an hour. So documentation is uh, very important, and I document and edit it, and then uh, I made it uh, so uh, second stage of my installation with uh, uh, video. When you are planning and actually producing your artwork, how conscious are you of your Japanese heritage and training? Um, how do you think your master uh, ceramicist, um, Kojo Tosho, would think of your um, contemporary artwork now? Yes, I uh, was working as an assistant for my master, uh, Toshio Kinjo. He's uh, uh, making traditional Okinawan style potter. Uh, pottery is making cups and saucers, and uh, I also made thousands of uh, same shape of traditional things and with the uh, knowledge of uh, Okinawan uh, pottery. And uh, I learned a lot, lot of things uh, from him. Uh, uh, he actually doesn't waste anything, recycle everything, digging uh, the soil from the ground and uh, produce clay and then uh, after wood firing use ash for grazing and use the tank, uh, tank water. And uh, I learned uh, like that things and also uh, I made thousands of pots, same style thing. And, uh, uh, a kind of, uh, it's like kind of uh, monk's practice. Yeah, so, uh, so this uh, work, so I spent a lot of time for the creation. And, uh, uh, but you know, more contemporary way. So I uh, got a lot of skill for uh, clay work, but clay work is very similar to uh, making sugar artwork. Like uh, the sugar uh, mixing with water is like a, a porcelain and build up uh, crafted work. And so I don't know if my master Toshio Kinjo uh, uh, see my work. Uh, he I don't know, might not understand, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I would like to show my work sometime yeah, to him. Thank you, Ken. Um, thank you, Ken, for your time today. Thank you very much. And I wish you all the best of luck in Venice. Thank you. Thank you.